So without further ado, I want to introduce Adam Albert. He's the co-host of the podcast of Dyson Men and one of our senior React consultants who's been working with React for the last few years. He's going to show us if you have the lesser known React hooks, uh, one might say the weird ones, and when you might want to use them or not use them on your project. So Adam, the floor is yours. Awesome. So uh, over the last few uh, meetups that we've had, uh, me and Christopher have basically been doing a series on uh, React hooks. Uh, we've talked about all the built-in hooks that React gives you, uh, use state and use effect. These are probably the most important ones. They're the ones you're gonna use every day and they're sort of the basis for uh, adding you know, state and side effects to your functional components. They're super important. Uh, we talked about use context, uh, you know, to avoid prop drilling, use ref for getting you know, variables that you can sort of stash and reuse. Uh, Christopher talked about use memo and use callback, how to optimize your performance and uh, using those uh, hooks. Uh, and I talked about use reducer, uh, which is just an alternative to use state, uh, which, you know, has its ups and downs, more downs. Anyway, uh, and of course, we also talked about how to create your own custom hooks. Um, but there are three more hooks that we haven't addressed. These are the built-in hooks that come with React. Uh, to be honest, you're probably never gonna use them. Uh, you probably actually don't need them. And uh, if you do use them, you probably are gonna use them wrong. So for the sake of completeness, uh, let's get right into it. React hooks, the weird ones. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. Use debug value, use layout effect, and use imperative handle. Now, if you're already familiar with these, feel free to tune out because I'll be talking for the next eight or so minutes. <laughs> so getting started with use debug value. So the, uh, the docs say it can be used to display a label for custom hooks in React DevTools. Now, what does that actually mean? Uh, Let's say we had a custom hook you wrote. Uh, you know, I called this use custom hook in my example. And you're using use debug value, you're passing it a string here. In this case, I'm just gonna pass a string and it's like a string template, so I'm gonna interpolate with the uh, count state variable in there. Uh, what will this do? This will basically uh, do something like this in React DevTools. Uh, you'll get, see where it says hooks there, you get custom hook, that'll actually be whatever you actually named your custom hook. So if you named it like use flabbergast, it'll say flabbergast there. Um, and just to be clear what we're looking at here, that's what the label is. So uh, I'll go back a sec, you can sort of see I said my count, and there it is. Boom, you get to add a label in React DevTools. Now you'll note, uh, this is sort of useless because right below there is the state from you know the state hook. So, what would you use this for? Uh, we're gonna maybe take a hint from the function signature. So use debug value can actually take a second argument, which is a, a function. Now this function is only gonna run if React DevTools is open and if you're looking at this component. So, okay, so you, you know, this offers a hint to maybe how you're gonna use it. Um, if you're writing a custom hook, and this isn't just like a, a, a hook that you're gonna use internally, because you could just console log or you could like display it in the component, whatever state you need it. Uh, so if you're using custom, you're making a custom hook and you're probably gonna share this with other people. Um, and you wanna add a little hint or a label in React DevTools, and that label is actually expensive to derive, then you probably wanna use debug value, use debug value. In other words, you probably are never gonna use this, but that's how it works. Uh, so yeah, moving on. Use layout effect. Uh, so as the docs say, this hook is identical to use effect, but it fires synchronously after all DOM mutations. So what does that mean exactly? Um, so let's say you had a uh, you know, uh, custom hook and you were using use layout effect. Uh, you, this is about uh, reading and writing to the DOM. And because this happens synchronously uh, after the DOM updates, uh, you can sort of, control the timing a little better. You can do something before the user is gonna see it. Now use effect is exactly the same signature, it's the exact same thing, but use effect, whatever function you pass to it is gonna run whenever it feels like, not whenever it feels like, but React will decide when it runs. So there might be a delay, there might not. Um, with use layout effect, you know it's gonna run synchronously right after the DOM is uh, committed or DOM is updated. Um, and so you probably wanna use these things when you wanna do, you know, this is actually from a use lock body uh, custom hook. Um, it's basically just going to lock the body from scrolling. Um, you want to do it when you need to access the DOM, maybe to read some values to do something directly. Uh, any state updates done in a use layout effect are going to uh, 
update the state synchronously too. So you might have some sort of like derivation of state that you want to do based on the DOM, or you might want to change the DOM. Yeah, um, this is a contrived example, but uh, you might want to do something like this, where whenever I edit this top node, I want to make sure that the thing that stays in sync is always the same uh, width. Always. Use layout effect is really about using, you know, probably, you know, with interop with other libraries, or you want to use some jQuery plugin or something, something that, you, that wasn't meant for React, uh, and you kind of want to make it work with this. Uh, now, even the docs say something along the lines of, uh, we recommend starting with use effect first and only trying to use layout effect if that causes a problem. And I, I will even say in this little contrived example I had, I switched this to use effect and I saw no difference. There was absolutely, so it's gotta be something that's actually gonna cause a flicker or some visible you know, user experience difference before you wanna switch over to use layout effect. Um, so on that note, uh, use layout effect, when are you gonna use it? Uh, when you're reading or writing to the DOM uh, and you wanna make sure that you do this synchronously, you need to do something you know, using a third party library or something you know, imperative, not really the React way, or you, uh, you know, are having, oh, and, sorry, not just or, but and you're having problems like flickering or something when you use use effect, because you should probably use effect first. Uh, so in other words, you're probably not gonna need this. Uh, historically, people have been using use layout effect to help with testing custom hooks. Uh, that was always a hack, always a hack, and you shouldn't have been doing it anyway, but now it's unnecessary because uh, the act, function provided by a React testing library uh, can be syn asynchronous now. And so the reason for using it is gone. Uh, yeah, you probably don't want to use use layout effect. So use imperative handle, the most important sounding of the built-in hooks. Uh, what does this do? It customizes the instance value that is exposed to parent components when using ref. Say what in the hood now? Um, so basically what this is, is when you're using ref, with React components. You basically use ref, the, the special property ref on a, on a component or an element, and you'll if you use it on an element, like a div or, a, or an input, you'll actually get an instance of that on the dot current of that ref. You'll, you'll be able to say like dot current and get the actual DOM node. So you can call things on it like focus or use imperative methods. Um, but normally you've only been able to do that with uh, class components because they actually create an instance. Now function components, don't create an instance. And so they're giving you this uh, use imperative handle hook to basically provide a ref when somebody uses ref on a function component. Uh, why would you want to do that? Um, well, he here's how it kind of works. Um, you basically have to use forward ref so that you have the ref uh, object. And then you call use imperative handle and you pass it that. And then you pass it a function that's going to return whatever you want. In this case, an object that had a focus method on it. Um, and in that focus method, I'm just calling focus on the uh, other input there. This uh, example is actually directly from the docs. And why would I steal these directly from the docs? It's because I could not think of a real life use for this. And funnily enough, I don't think whoever wrote the docs could either because this exact example works without using use imperative handle at all. If you just take that ref and put it onto the input, you get the exact same behavior. So they couldn't even think of a good reason to use this for the docs. I mean, all this hook does is allows you to sort of send an arbitrary object as your ref to the component uh, so that you can like use it with an imperative API. But uh, the thing is like React isn't about imperative APIs. It's about declarative, you know, data down, actions up. If you have to use an imperative API, you're probably doing it wrong. It's not very reacty. So, you, you might have thought like, oh, I can use this, uh, you know, to, uh, to work with, interop with other libraries or web components or something, but, but you, much like me, would be wrong because you can get those references with just forward ref. And use imperative handle doesn't work without ref. It doesn't do anything other than allow you to do it wrong, like allow you to do it in a non reacty way using imperative methods. So anyway, uh, just to be fully clear on here, here's the function signature for use imperative handle. It takes a ref, so it needs to be used with forward ref because that's the only way function components can get that ref. Uh, it needs to, uh, and then it basically is like you pass a function that's going to create the handle. Uh, it uses depths just like use memo or, or use effect where you can change that, that 
object that it'll be used as rest, that arbitrary object you're passing up, uh, depending on what props or something or state changes you needed. Uh, so that's what it does. When are you gonna use this? I suppose uh, if React really isn't your cup of tea, but your team is a bunch of bandwagon jumpers and they all wanted to use it and you just wanna, you wanna show them, you wanna tell, dig it to them that they were wrong. Um, maybe you don't agree with uh, you know, the React core team's philosophies or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, you really wanna do something you know you shouldn't, but you really want to. So uh, yeah, basically long story short, uh, you should probably never use use imperative handle. Prove me wrong. If you can think of a good reason to use use imperative handle, write it, uh, come to the forums, uh, the community forums of Batovi. Let me know, we'll, we'll provide a link somewhere, I'm sure. Let me know that I'm wrong. Let me know how there's a good use for use imperative handle, but I'm pretty positive there's not. Uh, so yeah, what have we learned today? Uh, we learned uh, use debug value. If you happen to be writing a custom hook, and you're gonna share it and you wanna have a value and that value is hard to derive or expensive to derive, you might wanna use the debug value. Um, use layout effect where, you know, use effect isn't working well, you're getting a flicker, you're trying to do something with the DOM, you need, you know, third party library or something that React just can't handle well. Okay, you might use use layout effect if, if you're having trouble, but you should probably try use effect first. And uh, use imperative handle, I just, just don't. Don't use it, there's, there's really no good reason to. Uh, <laughs> that's it, that's my talk. React hooks, the weird ones. Hope you enjoyed it, any questions? Did you tweet Dan Abramoff and ask him if he can think of any use cases for that hook? Uh, no, yeah. but I, I, uh, I invite you to. And, and I, I was gonna say, if you haven't, I will, because I'm really curious if he himself can come up with anything for it. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious why they would have included something where they... I suspect it was one of those things where it seemed like a good idea at the time, you know, like they were like, oh, we want to make sure people can do, do what they want, even if it's not really the React way. I don't know. Seems like a foot gun to me. Yeah. I have a question. Cool. Uh, may, maybe you know the answer to this, to this or not. Uh, do you know if the use debug hook, like in develop, it, like it works in development, but in production, it... it it does nothing. No yeah, it, it's a no-op basically in production. That's cool. Yeah. We'll never use it, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs>